Greetings all! Hope you're all doing well. So hello to C3, uh, 252 Elevator Simulator, Infinicel, R Primus, and clearly Twitch isn't updating because I can see that Pom Pimp and Darius are here as well. Greetings to you and to anyone else that Twitch isn't showing me. Uh, audio and video okay, excellent. Um, <laughs> Pom Pimp's been trying the code on the intro screen, it gives me errors. Well, you didn't pull the library. Um, so, what are we doing today? We're going to be uh, hacking a bit more on Keppel. At the end of last week, I said, oh, I'll finish off this uh, multi draw indirect stuff. And I didn't get time to do that. I got distracted with some other things, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and yeah, that's actually our main job today. So th that's what we're going to be doing. So yeah, over the week end, at least, I did some work. What was I doing? Um, oh yeah, I was. Um, I did a little bit on um, Keppel where I was looking into one of the things we spotted last week was basically there was some dumb lookup code that we could avoid um, in every draw call. So that's something that um, is on a branch and needs to be worked on a bit more once this is finished. Um, and then I looked into getting CPU information, at least on uh, Windows, Mac and Linux, uh, because I got some projects I'd like to have that for. And uh, once I got kind of that going, let's see, I'm using the OS level primitives to begin with um, because Ideally, we would just use, on x86, we can just use CPU ID and get the CPU flags directly from the CPU, but that requires writing a bit of assembler. And um, I'm not sure how to do this. Um, yeah, basically, I'm not sure how to do this on anything else other than SBCL. And so what we're going to do is, so basically, I want some fallbacks. So that's what I was looking at there. And then I was doing some work on um, thread affinity. So you can lock threads to particular CPUs. And that's why I needed that CPU info, because I need to know how many cores, how many are physical, and how many are just logical. So where's, where have you got hyper-threading and stuff like this? Which CPUs are sharing which caches? Um, because that's going to, if you're going to, like I'm thinking about doing doing some kind of job system, I would like to create a thread for every, every core, lock them with a th affinity, and then dispatch work sensibly, depending on, you know, what caches are where and what things are related, like CPU topology stuff. So yeah, I was looking into that a bit. And I think that was most of the weekend. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I was doing there. Um, how's my partner? Doing okay, thank you. I Did I mention there was some stuff last time? Yeah, I don't know actually. When was that? Because he was in hospital briefly uh, with neck type injuries. That was, uh, yeah, a touch scary. Um, but yeah, doing all right. Hey, Arasus, with a wavy snake. Hello, you're most welcome. Yeah, so this time we are going to, um, yeah, get back into the multi-draw indirect and try and finish off that and also deal with just making the API nice for Keppel. Um, so the first thing we didn't do last week, let me just jump over to the actual right machine. Let's start hacking. Um, is in pipeline. Oh no, wait, I did have an announcement. Fuck, okay, so, um, what else is going on? Da, 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 da. Let's do this, pipelines, that pipeline, we need to be here in a minute. Okay, so, um, some of you might know I'm working on a game called Tailspire right now. I'll probably, either someone lovely will throw the link in the chat or I'll do that soon. Um, we kind of promised that we'd have something playable out this year, and this year is getting <laughs> a lot shorter. A lot quicker than I'd like. I think someone in the chat, like the uh, Discord channel the other day said 100 days, which fucked me up. So um, yeah, I'm going to be running a lot lower on time and brain power as this year kind of draws to a close. And that means that basically uh, certain things are going to start dropping by the wayside. And I've been worrying about the streams and I'm not sure how much mental power I'm going to have left to do streams which involve learning a thing. Basically, um, when we've been doing streams that were like, okay, we're going to do HDR in two hours and stuff like this. It, it's really cool, uh, but I have to be kind of fairly awake for it to go well. And I think I'm going to get a lot less of that. So what I'd like to do is probably, I mean, I was thinking of maybe stopping the streams at like October and then just waiting till January. I don't really want to do that What I because I like hanging out with you guys. So what I'd like to do maybe is... Um, do more of these Keppel hacking streams. So do more on Keppel and Vario and stuff like this. Those are things I know very well. So not really difficult for me to sit down and do. Um, 
And so yeah, that would be that. But obviously that's not pushing pixels with Lisp stuff. So what I'll probably do is rename the stream for the last two months just to be, you know, hacking on Lisp or whatever it, whatever it ends up being, some catchier name. But yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking at the moment. I just wanted to float that with you guys, whether you'll rather just say, ah, fuck it, we'll just start. If we can't have pixels, nothing um, for the rest of the year, or if I can do more of these hacking streams. Because it would be quite a nice break in the middle of the week to be able to do that. Um, and yeah, seeing you folks is, is cool. So yes, thoughts, act, attacks, insults in the chat. Um, and we will base it on that. Okay, so we were looking at this multi-drawer indirect, and the rough idea was um, we want to be able to create a C array or a GPU array which describes a bunch of draw calls and dispatch them all at once. And this um, is to combat driver overhead and state changes. Sorry, mainly driver overhead. Um, uh, yeah, by submitting a batch of work rather than lots of individual pieces of work. And we did a bunch of reading on that and we started implementing, but there's a good few things we haven't done yet. Uh, for example, we're doing multi-draw arrays in direct and multi-draw arrays in direct here, um, but this doesn't support um, elements. Drawing elements is when you have an array uh, with the data and an array with the indices into that data. And your um, indices are saying where you're pulling your vertices from, from that data. Now let's use draw elements in that case. And we don't have that, so we need to add that. So that's a couple more ifs to go in here. And um, yeah, then we're gonna, so I think we'll start with that and then we'll keep on churning on because there's actually a bunch of things we haven't really looked at yet. Uh, they're GL features that we should wrap and some of them aren't even in Keppel at all yet in the simple case, so we'll see. <laughs> Darius saying a pizza shooter for Christmas. Yeah, that's that's really my uh, that's my element. That's my that's peak. This stream has been that pizza. Um, Darius and Pompim saying roughly do whatever fits your schedule. Hacking sounds fine. Hacking does sound great. Awesome. Well, as long as there's a few people that are into this, then I'm then I'm down for doing that. So we'll we'll see how it goes. And it might be in December. I kind of like ah, I'm freaked out and drop off anyway. We'll we'll see how it goes. It'll be funny to watch me just get more. Bedraggled, if that's possible. So, let's do this. We need to uh, know if there's an index type. Um, and then if there is, we're gonna be doing multi-draw elements indirect. And then if we look down the bottom, we can see that we've got mode and type and indirect. So, um, mode type. Draw mode, let's have a look at um, draw elements down here. Mode count type. And this one is mode type. Oh, right, okay, mode type indirect draw count. Let's just make sure I'm looking at the right thing. So, multi draw arrays indirect, multi draw elements indirect. Mode is one of these guys. We've got that sorted. That's fine. Uh, type specifies the type of data in the bound in the buffer bound. Blah blah blah. Um, okay, so let's look at draw elements. What's the normal case for draw elements? Down here maybe. Type specifies the type of the indices. Let's just make sure that's right. Type specifies the type of data in the buffer bound element array buffer, which is the indices. Okay, so. Um, let's have a look down here. Where was our type? Type, here we go. And this is this stupid lookup that I'm gonna replace uh, off stream another day. And then we've got the, then it's the indirect, oh wait a second, have I got this wrong? Yes. Draw mode, type, and then indirect, which is the address of the structure, oh, this is in, yes, the address of the structure containing an array of draw parameters. Okay, this is our, yeah, this is the indirect buffer. And that is the C array pointed to the draw array. Yes, that's correct. And then it's the draw count. 
which I think is down in draw elements, will be buffer stream length for now. We'll come back to this as well. Um, and then we've got stride. So we don't have to specify the total size. What was that being used for then? What argument was that? That was being used for draw count. Um, ah yes, now there's, there's some interesting stuff with, oh, I've got to try and remember this. Um, when you're doing draw elements, let's just see what's going on here. Um, if you take a long break, it's probably more difficult to get back into streaming. Yeah, possibly. Um, <laughs> that's nice, you guys. Hacking on a weekly schedule with no pauses or excuses. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you're just going to use my stream as a hangout. Yeah, it works. That's like, if, even if I'm not there, that's cool. I like that. So, I'm a little confused in general, in life. Um, let's have a look at draw, draw arrays indirect and how that relates to um, this. Count, okay. So they use count and that was buffer stream length. Um, And that up here was called count in draw elements. Um, now I think that argument is then moved into in multi-draw. In multi-draw, I think that's moved into here. Yes, it is. So what is yeah, so actually let's have a look at this again. Um, So yeah, we don't have buffer stream length here because that's going to be in the indirect array. We're going to have draw count, which is the number of um, things in our draw array. And then, yeah, we've got um, the stride, which is just the size of the uh, indirect command. Ah, now we have another issue here. There are actually differences between a draw elements indirect command and a draw arrays indirect command. So let's take this and go and find those types because we need to fix them. Where did we define them even? Harder, right, do, 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 do. indirect command. Here we are. So we've got this, which is one kind of indirect command and this one, which is the elements indirect command. So, this is cool. We're just going to see where this has been used, just in case there's anywhere we need to update. And it's just in multi draw and def pipeline. So, we're going to do indirect command is going to be renamed to um, array indirect command? Yes. or arrays in direct command, yeah. More in line with GL, not that. And this is an um, elements in direct command. And we'll change that in a second. Now let's go down here, do the same replace. This is draw elements, no, yes, and yes, we're gonna get back to that as well. Okay, cool. Let's get back to multi-draw and fix up this. So we have the count, we have the instance count, we have first, which is then first index. Let's just name it the same. It's not gonna be a big deal. Um, base vertex and base instance. We're gonna have to get into base vertex later as well, because that's something that Keppel does not cover, and it is very important. Okay, so recompile those, go back to the pipeline, and then we're doing multi-draw elements. So this is gonna be elements 
indirect command. Jump to definition just to make sure that was definitely it. And we're good. Okay, so. Um, hey, Matty Ann. I am, again, like, uh, I haven't. I have been seeing your um, issues that you've been reporting on Play With Verts. I'm really grateful you're doing that. I hope to get to them in time. Uh, but yeah, massive respect for doing that. Thank you. Um, cool. So, multi draw elements indirect, multi draw arrays indirect. There, and then we've got something similar down here. And now I'm a little nervous about this, actually. There's a couple of things here that are kind of nerve-wracking. Because Oh, no, we actually looked into this last week. I was worried that um, binding to a buffer inside of the scope of a VAO being bound was going to mutate the state of that VAO. But that isn't true for Jura indirect buffers and a couple of other things. I can't remember what those couple of other things are, but it's all right. So we're going to do the same thing here. We need to do if index type, and now we can just hopefully, I mean, is this the same as that? No, what's different? Oh yeah, it's the, yeah, it's very different for good reasons. That would be weird if they were the same. So let's go and have a look at this. So we have draw mode. Um, this branch here is if we are taking the draw commands from um, a GPU array. In which case, what we're passing in is rather than pointers into data, is a count of bytes into the GPU buffer where the draw information begins. That's roughly it. Um, so, we have draw mode and we have type, um, which are going to stay the same. Again, this will be fixed in the near future. Um, rather than a pointer into a C array, uh, we're going to have an offset in bytes into the GPU buffer. And rather than C array total size, we're going to grab the first of the GPU array dimensions. Again, the fact that we have to pull something out of a list, I don't like that. So we're dereferencing a couple of pointers where we could have been dereferencing one, or, you know, we could be dereferencing one fewer to get the data we're actually interested in. And if it was stored in... I don't know. If it was stored in an array rather than a list, um, we could actually have that typed as well, so we could get more kind of clarity. I don't suppose it matters too much, but I'm still not happy with it. Also, I ran... Actually, let's do this now, because this is really upsetting, and it's something we're going to do in another stream. So time... Yeah, so if I play um, just a thousand frames of um, our... Um, scene over here and we just leave that to run and it's going to be about 20 seconds and then we're going to see something terrible chug 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 assuming 60 frames a second it'll be about yeah just under 20 seconds there we go look at this bullshit look at that that is so much memory cons up and I have no idea why like literally starting it I'm consing up a few hundred, like uh, like 500k. What is that bullshit? So we need to track down where that's coming from, because that is not all right. I, I really hope that's something stupid we're doing in um, play with verts and not in Keppel. But if it isn't Keppel, we need to find it and kill it, because that's uh, that will not do. So that'll be fun. Um, and then the last bit is the stride, which is still the same. So this is good. This is one of the things we were missing. Um, and that's the first part. Now, people should be able to get rid of this and probably commit this. Um, do, 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 do. Let's do this. Um, add. What's it called? Element indirect type and um, for indices in indirect. Draw, damn it. That 
That'll do. Um, oh, I've got actually got a few things I haven't pushed here. Um, oh, this was from last week, I think. Oh, we'll push those anyway, because we're on our branch. We're still on the episode 56 branch, because I don't think that making a new branch for this episode makes any sense. It doesn't help the project for us to do that. Um, we probably should have given the branch a better name than episode 56, but... Meh. That's what we did. Um, okay, so we've got a bunch of code here now. A bunch of branches. Um, let's have a look at... I've just got my notes over here. Yes, we've got, we've got a few things which are kind of interesting. Now, both the uh, multi-draw elements uh, command array and the multi-draw um, array... Sorry, multi-draw array st uh, command struct and the multi-draw elements um, command struct both have this base vertex. Uh, well, does this, oh, wait a second. This has this no base vertex, does it? No, okay, sorry. My, my bad. Base vertex. And this is something that Keppel doesn't support yet at all. And so that's actually a feature we need to add. I've, I've filed an issue for it. Need to add ba base vertex support. So that's going to need to be designed. Um, and what that is, let's just bring up something. Um, so often we have a block of memory, and this is going to be our GPU, our uh, GPU buffer. So we just do B for buffer, and then we have indices, and this this is a GPU array um, which indexes into this buffer, and this allows us to reuse data and things like this. And it's just the standard way of doing things. Um, so we. Say that's pointing there, that one's pointing there, this one's pointing back to here. So these indices might be 0 and 2 and 1, etc, etc, going on. Um, now, because um, changing state in GL is rather expensive, if you have multiple um, objects and they have the same data layout, so per element is the same, per vertex uh, data layout is the same, it makes a lot of sense to um, have to pack multiple objects into the same buffer. So this might be uh, obj1 and obj2, which we totally support whoops, obj, um, in Keppel. And you can have uh, index indexes into this as well. Uh, what am I doing? This button, there we go. Um, but there is a small problem here. Um, we've supported the idea that um, you can make a buffer stream um, buffer stream um, that takes a GPU array. Let's say there's a GPU array defined over this chunk here. So we can take that and we can also take these indices here and make a buffer stream out of them along with a length. And that works. But your modeling program that's um, so you're, where you're actually defining the model, where you're making all these vertices and indices, um, implicitly, of course, like um, it's going to have its indices are going to be zero based, right? So if this is, um, oops, here we go, zero, one, and two, it's going to index over here. It's going to index this way, which is not what we want. We don't want to index into here. So we need some offset to say where the first vertex that we're interested in is. Whew, a lot of words. Anyway, it means there are two parameters that are really important here. Um, one of them is called first, and it defines the byte where the indices start in the GPU uh, buffer. And then there's base vertex, Base vertex, which refers to the offset into the buffer where we treat a zero. Uh, so, it, so where does zero in the ah, where does the zero index from the indices array point to? Um, and that is could be up here. We don't support this yet, which is really dumb. Um, but we need to add support to Keppel to do that. That might not be this stream, but it is something we need to keep in mind. Uh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> this drawing is out. This is just soup. Anyway, yeah. So there are a couple of parameters that we need to basically keep an eye on. And uh, 
and the reason I bring this up now is we're about to go and have a look at them and see what other stuff we need to do before we can say this feature is somewhat ready. Uh, so let's get that out of the way for a second. How do I do that? Uh, yeah, we go. That'll work. So, yeah, when we have these structs, um, we have first index and base vertex. And those are those two things. When you have arrays, you have first, which is uh, first index, I think, if I remember correctly. And um, yeah, then base. And this doesn't have base vertex because you're not using instanced uh, drawing. Jesus, words. So, we can get away without supporting base vertex today, but we will need to do that soon. We also, yeah, I'm kind of interested in first index right now. We also haven't touched base instance, which is a different beast, uh, but we'll get to that too. Um, also, i got to remember which versions are supported here. So this is multi-draw elements indirect, and this is supported from 4.3 and up. But that's all right. All the indirect things are 4.3 and up. Um, and GL draw elements based vertex is 3.2 and up, which is fine. Um, but we're trying to use the instanced versions of all these functions. So around here somewhere, I'm hoping there was draw elements Draw elements instance base vertex. I think this is the one that we'll be using, and that is supported from 3.2 and up, and that's good. There's another one called draw elements instance base vertex base instance. Don't you fucking love these names? And this one's only supported by 4.2 and up. So I'm not sure if that's when base instance was introduced. Maybe? Yeah, it seems this is draw arrays instance base instance so I guess that was similar time where's just the standard draw arrays base instance draw elements base instance anything like that oh, man draw arrays instance base oh yeah it would be instance base instance it's the only way to do that so I think that was supported only from 44.2 and up so we don't have to worry about that yet either, but we should probably add it to the list. Uh, yeah, let's do that actually. Uh, add support for base instance. I think it's only GL 4.2. So, <laughs> elevator simulator, tab order complete is ruined function name. <laughs> this is something else. This is, <laughs> yeah, this is, um, this is just GL being GL. Well, it could be worse, could be the C++ spec. That thing is a, a nightmare wrapped in broken dreams. So, what do we need to look at? Um... I guess it's really that how do we how do we define these arrays? Now now that we've got support for this, now that we can pass a draw array in, how do we define draw arrays? Um, do we just leave it up to the user to make a GPU array? Because I mean that bit's fairly easy to do. Let's just like we can bring up this, let's go to multi-draw, and we're gonna do make GPU array, or like we'll probably start with make C array actually. Make C array. Uh, with no initial contents, um, the dimensions uh, could be 10 draw calls, and the element type would be, um, oh no, let's do elements, elements, indirect command, so something like this, and then you've got a C array you can work with, so def var to zero, and you can do um, RFC of 10 zero and get the first element out. And it's this buffer. And so we could then go and set, you know, like set if um, elements indirect command um, 
count, for example, on that last thing to be, yeah, 10. And so we can populate this stuff in a loop and then we can push this to the GPU or we can just uh, pass this directly to map, what was it called? Multi-map G. Um, and that should work. But in Kaggle, we wrap a lot of things up. Like the first index stuff that I was mentioning a second ago, that's the, um, the da 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 da. Oh, let's see if I've got this right actually. No, sorry, not for first, yes, first index. I think maps to um, let's just have a look at make buffer stream. Oh, this is when my head starts spinning. Um, yes, maps to this start argument down here, which says how many um, elements into this GPU array that you've passed for the index array um, do we start? Um, reading from. We'll probably double check that actually just to make sure that's correct. So I'm going to do that now in fact because uh, I really need to be sure of what thing I'm, I'm working with here. So down in here somewhere there's making buffer streams and we say the start is start and start came from um, yeah that argument. Then what do we do with this? buffer stream is start, when you set it, it stores it inside the struct up here that represents, um, where, where is that actually? Wow, there's a lot going on here. There's this buffer stream struct here, and I guess it's this start here. And because also in a lot of places in the API, we need it as bytes rather than an index count, uh, we also calculate the number of bytes into the buffer um, so we'll see that here. Set buffer stream, not primitive. Where is it? We were just there. Yeah, set f buffer stream start. We set the start inside that struct, and then we get the type size, and we set the buffer stream start byte to be the value we passed in times type size. Okay, so that's that's that. And so buffer streams start is kind of what we're interested in. Let's see where that's used. Okay, so in def pipeline, that's probably where we're most interested in. Uh, there's some proto code, we're not interested in that at all. There's buffer streams where it's being set. It's set to zero here. This will be in when the object's being destroyed. It's just cleaning up. Um, when it's freeing the object, rather, it blanks out a load of the values. So it's easier to see that it's been freed. Um, and then we, we're setting it. So this is going to be in the creation functions. And then in Keppel types, these are the definitions of the type itself and some of the key functions, the key accessors. So that's not going to be interesting either. So the, the only two places that are really important seem to be these two. Let's go and see what they are. Right, then these are, as we thought, um, indexes, in this case, an index into um, the an index in bytes into the in the <laughs> index array. And then down here, um, a number of um, the index that we start reading from. Okay, I think that's right. But yeah, this, this one here is the most important. So let's go and have a look at this. Draw elements instance, or draw elements really is what we're, we're kind of after. Draw elements is down here. Here's indices. Indices specifies a pointer to a location where the indices, indices are stored. This is actually a half truth. Um, and I don't think it makes that clear here. I think that's legacy. What this is actually used as, as an, is a number of bytes into uh, the index array. And it uses count sequential elements from the enabled array, starting at indices. 
to construct a sequence of geometric primitives. I think this is clearer in the spec than it is here, to be honest. But I'm pretty confident with the code we've already got because we've been using it for a long time. So, right, that's indices. This is just such a fucker to keep in my head. So let's move this up here. This is draw elements based vertex. No, I want to be draw elements. Oh my god, what is going on? Yeah, draw elements and then multi draw array. First. Oof. Okay, so what does it say that first is? Just to be sure. It says that it's like we called this function passing first as the second argument. So let's open that. Oh, I've already got it open. Good. I was looking at this stuff earlier, but I still didn't manage to make most sense of it. Okay, right, yeah. So it's passed in as the second argument. Oh, no, wait. Is that right? Ah, okay. So back to the beginning. We're trying to find the equivalent of this. But we've got to call... Not this. Where is it? Where's multi-draw? Here we are. Fuck's sake. We're trying to find the equivalent of this, but we're calling this, which means that first, from here, is going to be the equivalent to the second argument of this. So we look at that. Second argument is count. No, I'm looking at the wrong thing again. Fuck's sake. Okay, right. Let's just open this up again. Here. Second argument is first. Specifies the starting index in the enabled arrays. That is odd. And this is, oh no, this is draw arrays. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, so it seems like the multi-draw. Oh, that's why, oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, we're looking at multi-draw arrays indirect and mul not multi-draw elements indirect. So I'm comparing the wrong thing. Okay, so let's take draw elements and shove it under here. For fuck's sake. Okay, right. Multi-draw elements indirect. This looks more familiar. No, it doesn't. Wait, down here. First index. I guess this is the one we're interested in. And they say it's the same as calling this motherfucker uh, in a loop. Oh, you could just... No. Couldn't provide a link to it. That would be helpful. Okay. Okay. So we're trying to find the equivalent of indices. So we've in this, so we've gone here. And they're saying that first index would be argument four times the size of type. Oh, interesting. So they're going to do that bit for you. That's surprising. So then that means that this is actually taking... Wait, what? <laughs> Fuck. One second. Okay, so this... They're saying it's like this function, which does take a, um, a byte offset in. But they're saying that they're going to take a first index and they'll do the multiply for you. It's the equivalent of doing that. So that means in multi-draw elements indirect up here, we actually don't want to, where is it? Um, okay. All right, actually, you know, everything's hidden away. Um, Yeah, okay, so it it just means there's this disparateness between these two APIs. So draw elements and multi-draw elements have different arguments. One expects a byte offset and the other one's happy just to take an index. Fine, fine, okay, we'll do that. Um, if that's the case, then, whoa, right, let's see if I can, Wind back and restate the problem. Because I'm getting myself confused here. As you can probably tell. 
the normal way people do things in Kettle is they make a GPU array of some data. And they make a buffer stream taking um, that array, and that's true. That's not a good example type. Um, oops. Does it know how to do this? Boo! It should. Why don't you know that? I don't want to type F3. Boo! Why didn't I like that? Oh yeah, because this is a... Uh, Boo! Everything's wrong! Oh, for fuck's sake. We'll use the internal type then. Fuck you. This is because we're um, inside a package inside Keppel, and Keppel doesn't have a requirement on RTG math. Anyway, yeah. So people make people make a GPU array, they make a buffer stream, hopefully that takes that. Uh, they then have that, and they can map G um, with some pipeline over that um, that buffer stream, and they get things done. And the buffer stream stores a whole chunk of information. Um, it stores that start information, or start byte, depending on which function it's having to call. It stores the length of the stream, so how many vertices are going to be uh, rendered. And it stores the GPU arrays that we're pulling the data from, and optionally the index array as well. Now, that's how we want our users to interact with this stuff. However, when they're doing multi-draw, they need to know the um, start index themselves. Like they're going to have to provide this information and this information. And that's a little bit annoying because that's not something they have readily available. I mean, they could, like, or at least it's not something that we normally require them to think about. And even though it's nice that they have this control, it would also be good if we could fill in some of the basic things for them. Um, because to multi map, you still need a stream, you still need. Uh, something that's describing where you're pulling the information from. So we have some of this data in a way already. So it would be good to have a make draw array that takes a stream, takes a buffer stream, and then lets you provide the rest of the information. And we do it relative to um, what the buffer stream is already holding. Um, and this should make um, defining some of these uh, things more e like easier. So if you have a stream of a, of a whole chunk of data and you want to uh, render the first 10 and then the, um, yeah, so from zero to 10 and then from 30 to 40, um, you could provide this and those offsets and we would make sure that we calculate the right uh, values in that data set. I think that's right. Because one of the, where, where there are slight complications is when you do things like this. Make GPU arrays rather than GPU array. And you pass in multiple C arrays. Um, so let's do make C array. One, two, three, four. And... Uh, four, five, six, seven, whatever. We pass both of these in. Um, here what we get, we get two GPU arrays back, which makes sense, but both of these are stored in the same GPU buffer. So they're backed by the same buffer. In fact, we might even be able to see that if we walk into them. Um, yeah, here's GPU buffer 807. Um, and you can see there it is, again, GPU buffer 807. So you've got two different uh, GPU arrays. And the difference between them, we can see that the offset in bytes into the buffer is zero for the first one, and it's four for the second one. And the reason it's four is we've got four elements here, and the type of this uh, GPU array is um, 
U and H. So they're taking up one by each. So then what happens if you take, let's take the second of this actually, and we make a buffer stream from it. Oh yeah, of course, we're back into this fucking UN8 thing. I do want to show this example, so we'll just uh, have one element in each array for now. Um, oh, back three. I'm pretty sure that Keppel was meant to be able to just guess this type correctly, actually. Oh, of course, yeah, that's because the functions we use inside Keppel always require the correct types. We don't expose those in the same way. So anyway, yes, okay. So we get back um, two GPU arrays. We take the second of those and we make a buffer stream out of them. Right. And the important bit in here is that, let's have a think. Right, when it set up the, you can't actually see it here, but when it set up the VAO, it set it up from, actually maybe it's okay though. If the offset into the uh, backing buffer is handled, is stored within the VAO, and the indices are relative to that, is that gonna be correct? I actually don't know. I'm wondering whether we need to calculate these things for the user or if it's all right. It's tricky. It is tricky. Hmm. Oh, this, this stuff gets confusing. I'm so glad I wrapped it all up because it's a, a bitch to think about. Um, but it's also, yeah, it's also a bitch to think about. So let's have a look at multi-drawer again. If I expand this, in here somewhere is what's used internally by, um, no, this is populate. Right, this is the code that sets up you, the internals of your VAO which is the object, the GL object behind buffer streams. So it sets up a, yeah, enables an attribute array and then defines, set of course, a vertex attribute pointer, which is the GL thing for basically describing the layout of data within a, um, a buffer. So attribute offset zero, and that starts with an index, a size, um, a type, whether it's normalized data, what the stride is, which is calculated for you, and a pointer offset. Um, Darius, no, everyone's quiet, and I think it's because <laughs> it's because I'm just kind of not exactly talking about much of this super accessible. But um, but yeah. Fucking hell. Right, so let's go and have a look at uh, vertex attribute pointer again because I need a kind of quick refresher on that. GL vertex attribute pointer. And I hated this thing. It's so annoying. It makes enough sense, but it's, it is annoying. So what's that pointer? Specifies an offset of the first component of the first generic vertex attribute in the array in the data store of the buffer currently bound. To the GL array buffer target, the initial is zero. And this will be specified in bytes. It specifies an offset of the first component, yep, of the generic blah blah blah. In the data store of the buffer, just means in the buffer. So the index to the first um, element in the buffer that we're interested in. And the fact that it's in the Buffer, GL array buffer target, yes. Hmm. Now one of the things I thought you could do with VAOs is like pull, you, you don't just pull data 
from a single buffer, you can pull data from multiple buffers and multiple places in multiple buffers. Um, and I think we wrapped all that up. So I should jump to this. So this is the function we call, like when you see GL assign attribute pointers in Keppel, like which we'll see in a minute in the internals, this is the bit that just goes and calls all this crap and gets the offsets right. And I'm interested in this pointer offset thing here. Um, so let's go and see where this is called. Make VAO from ID. That's exactly what we're after. Okay. So we bind the VAO, and then for each of the GPU arrays, we are going to, and I'm really interested in that pointer. We, we call it here. Okay, so GL assign attribute pointers. And that was, that's where we were, wasn't it? GL assign attribute pointers, yeah. Um, for, oh, that's hacky. We'll come back to that another day. Um, I thought it just took a pointer. No, it takes loads of stuff. Okay, so that pointer we're interested in, though, pointer offset. is the second optional argument. Why is it even optional? Like, no user's calling this code. Ah, whatever. Right, anyway. Um, so that is offset. No. That's pointer offset. Okay, yeah. Yes, and that's based on... Um, the number of bytes into that buffer where this GPU array starts. Okay, so what this is telling me is that the start of the... Yes, the, the place where the, the GPU array is located in the buffer is stored in the VAO. So I would have thought that then when you're indexing, it treats that place as zero. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, I'm actually very sure that's right because otherwise there's a lot of stuff that probably wouldn't have worked in our existing code. Oof. Unless we were been, unless it's we, unless I'm wrong and I've got away with it for two years or three years or whatever it is now, which I could have done if I've not been using. If I've not been streaming from GPU arrays that are in later sections of a buffer, whoa, I hope not. That, that's not the case. That would be stupid. Oh, well, we'll see. Um, we should probably double check that, though. This is, this is why this is so funny. Like, Keppel's taken a long time to write because of stuff like this. Just trying to get the details right so we can then wrap it up and just make it feel nice. Because having to think about this every time you push data up is just, ugh, it's just horrible. I just want to say push. Um, so let's look at vertex rendering. Um, vertex specification. Multi-draw, basic drawing, instancing. Let's look at basic drawing first. Oh, what is it? Did they say common failures up here? Oh, causes a rending failure. No. Basic drawing. Whew. Yeah. So account. Indices to find the offset into the index buffer, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the indices parameter is, is odd, much like old style vertex attributes, it's not a pointer at all, it's in fact a byte offset. Okay, yeah, so it's mentioned here, but not in the reference page, uh, which is disguised as a pointer. So you made it to take a byte offset and cast it to avoid star with reinterpret. Yeah, that's fine. We kind of want to think about instance rendering, not, sorry, not instance rendering, um, indexed rendering. Uh, 
oh man, I've got this horrible feeling that, that we might have this really stupid bug and we might need uh, to add base vertex first. Let's have a look at this. We're gonna have to come up with some test which we can use to, to check this. I think we'll probably, um, I think we can probably use some of our um, transform feedback stuff that we've done before to, yes, to grab the data that's, so we'll, we'll set up an array, so a GPU array and some indices and we'll map G, we'll use transform feedback to catch what actual vertices went into the uh, vertex shader and then we'll pull those back and we'll see if we get what we expect. If, if I've got this horrible feeling right now and I can't believe it, like if it's true, it's super annoying, but it means we've got away with it for a very long time. I've got this horrible feeling that the indices are always um, indexing from the beginning of the GP, uh, the beginning of the GPU buffer, even if you've specified the start of the data to be in the middle. Oh, fuck. Kind of want to check that real soon, actually. It's going to be another one of these streams where we don't quite finish, but that's all right. This is the details that makes... This is, this is why Keppel's actually fun to play with, is because of the amount of time that just goes in scratching my head at this stuff and trying to make it nice. Okay, so... Da, 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 da. When juror arrays are called, it uses count sequential elements from the enabled array starting at indices... Uh, interpreted as a byte count to... Oh, it does actually say interpreted as a byte count. I'm an idiot. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, to construct a sequence of geometric primitives. Mode specifies what kind of primitive and how the array elements construct those primitives. If more than one array is enabled, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, this doesn't tell me what I want to know, unfortunately. Um, let's go to verdict specification. And we're interested in VAOs and we're interested in index buffers. Here we go. Index rendering requires an array of indices. All vertex attributes will use the same index uh, from this index array. The index array uh, is provided by a buffer object. Da. When a buffer is bound to GPU to GL element array, all drawing commands of the form this will use indices, uh, indexes from that buffer. Indices can be unsigned bytes, unsigned shorts, or unsigned ints. Um, We'll use indexes from that buffer. But how are they doing the indexing? Oh, this is really annoying. Okay, vertex array objects and object that captures all the state, blah, 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 except for those exceptions, which include things like our oh, indirect draw array. Um, VAOs do not copy, freeze, or store the context of the red, in the rendered buffers. If you change any of the data in the buffers, it'll be already changed. Um, they just capture the binding. Um, This just doesn't tell me how indexing specifically works. So I think we're gonna go and do an experiment. So let's go and have a look at um, Keppel.examples, not examples, sorry, Keppel.tests, because this is where I've got some, um, some simple code using transform feedback. Let's, yeah, let's see if we can load this up and try and try and make a little test. Or actually, let's just where are we? Um, let's go in package play with verts and go and get in there. So play with verts. Food on this. Oh, there's already a foo. Ah, what an idiot! Man, how did such an amazing naming system fail me? In package play with verts. Right, so we're gonna do a test. Defund test. 
Um, we're going to make a um, a GPU array. We're going to make some GPU arrays actually. Let's do destructuring bind um, array G array A, G array B. And we're going to need some data to stick in there. So let's do let 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 data is make a GPU array and loop for i. Um, let's just do 20. We don't actually need many. In fact, we'll probably get away with 10. Yeah, let's do 10. Um, actually, we want the contents of the arrays to be different. So I guess put data array. Collect. We can make it shorter. It doesn't even need to be that long. One, two, three. Yeah, let's just do it like this. I think this will be fine. So we're going to create two sets of data with different content with different contents. Sorry. Uh, then we're going to do a destructuring bind where we call make GPU arrays, and we're going to pass in both of these uh, C arrays. So data A. Um, oh no, these are already GPU arrays. No, that's not what we want to do. We want to make C array. Data A and data B. And then what's going to happen, all of this data is going to be uploaded and both sets are going to be packed. We've got two separate arrays. They're going to get packed together in the same GPU buffer. So that's... Uh, <laughs> says, foo too, come on. Yeah, totally. And uh, Aris says, sorry, I did see your comment earlier and I didn't address it. And it says, weird way to design an API. Yeah, it's uh, if there's a reason, it's GL. Like, uh, they had some they had some fucking reasons originally, I think. But as new things came out, rather than splitting the API, like uh, they just they just tack stuff on or change the meanings of things. So, like some of the things that take pointers actually take pointers, unless you're doing something else, in which case it's considered to be a byte offset. It's just. Uh, um, Okay, so let's let's go with that. So that makes some GPU arrays, and then we get um, we're going to make two streams. So we're going to do make uh, buffer stream from G array A and G array B. And because of what we're interested in is testing um, indices, like indexing. Sorry, we need to make ourselves an index array as well, and that will do up here. We'll do make. GPU array, um, and this will be very simple. It's going to be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be five elements. We'll pull them out in order. Um, in fact, let's do this. I, I. Still distinguishable, but each element will be different now. That's good. OK, so those are our indices. Um, I think we're going to say our element type here is, I think, actually, it can be a byte. I'm just going to do U short for now. Uh, um, I array. Yeah, I array. OK, that's going to be our index array. So then when we make the buffer streams, we're going to set the index array to be this. I guess same here, index array. Be IRA. Okay, so now we have two buffer streams, which where the only difference is where they're reading from inside the same buffer. Let's doodle this out because it's always fun to doodle. Oh well, there's our my work above. We've got some C array here and some C array here, and this is data A and data B, and then we we are going to take those and we're going to make a GPU buffer, and we're going to pack all the data from here into here, and we're going to pack all the data from here into here. And Keppel represents subsections of buffers as arrays because they're contiguous chunks of data with the same type, so that's an array. So this is um, G A R R hyphen A, and this is G A R R hyphen B. Once we've done that, we've got our data in our GPU arrays up there. Um, really don't need that. Um, what we did is we make two... Um, 
we make two buffers. Let's have a look. Sorry, we make two buffer streams. So, um, what can we do there? No, no, there we go. All right, we make str a, which takes this, and str b, which takes this. It also needs indices into here to know which elements to pick. So we're just going to pick them in order. So we, um, and so that's 0 to 5. And we're, we're going to try and find out how this indexing works. We want to know if we specify 0 to 5 here, we should just get um, 110, 112, 113, 114, uh, 11, yeah, 114, whatever. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And hopefully, this will return um, 220, 221, 223, 224 from this stream. Unless indexing is always relative to the beginning of the buffer, in which case we're going to get this a second time. In which case, I know I've got a bug in Keppel and ugh, fuck, we're going to have to fix some more things. So, let's see how we're going to do that. Um, we are going to get rid of this. We're going to start looking at this stuff. Um, so we're going to need a pipeline, and I'm hoping we can use a um, single stage pipeline here. I'm pretty sure we support that for um, all of this stuff. We added that feature to Capital a long time ago. And we're using transform feedback, so that'll work quite nicely as well. And all we want to do in this case, the input is going to be a, always a VEC3. So data or LM or whatever we want to call it. There are no uniforms, and all we want to do is say, um, we don't even have to number the feedback buffers because there's only one. We just want to say feedback is LM. So we don't even need values. Oh no, we do need values because we're using this special qualifier here. I think that should be it. That should be our pipeline. Okay, so yeah, there's a, a Lambda pipeline that's taking a single GPU Lambda as its vertex shader. That's it. We're going to need a place to write the results. And we're going to do that with a transform feedback. Um, oh no, this is just a regular GPU array. I guess we make a transform feedback stream down here. Okay. So let's do that. The results are going to be five long because we're going to call this thing twice um, once with each of these streams and we're going to write the result into this feedback array. So make GPU array nil. Element type vec3 dimensions is five. Yes, that is exactly what we want. And then I want to make a transform feedback stream. Oops. Because we're now doing this, we need to let star here. And then, then where are we? And then we also need to know when it's finished. Uh, so let's do that as well. Let's make this query object. No, no, this is a primitives written thing. We actually just need something that tells us that the... Uh, we might need a GPU fence. Let's just try it out and see what we get, to be honest. Uh, let's go with that. So loop for I... Uh, no, let's just do it twice. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, so with transform feedback, um, TFS... I want to map G um, over pipeline, passing in stream A. And then I'm hoping that that transform feedback stream is, um, oh, wait a second, that needs to be called TFS. Um, someone. Hey, kid, how you doing, man? Um, then we're going to do print, and we're going to do pull G and we're going to pull um, the contents of 
feedback GRM. That's where the data should have been written. written. And then we're going to do it again, but this time passing string B. What have I forgotten? Garby. Where's Garby? What? Oh yeah, idiot. Okay. So maybe this works. Nope. Primary return value from vertex stage must be a vec4 instead of vec3 was found. Okay, cool. So what we'll do is we'll um, just return a dummy value and we'll um, still have our feedback as the second value. Invalid number of args three, undefined variable draw array. Oh, oh fuck, okay, yeah, we've updated how um, map G works, but we haven't updated how GPU lambdas are made. Let me just go into pipeline G, sorry, GPU pipeline. It takes a context and then it takes, um... no, that's not right, where is it? Make lambda pipeline, here we go. We've got different kinds of Lambda pipelines. Um, so we have to support a couple of cases in Keppel. We've got this case where, like, so you you make a pipeline at runtime, which calls the Lisp compiler and compiles everything down so it's nice and efficient. Um, and then, um, but let's say that pipeline, GPU pipeline used a function, which is a top level GPU function. And you recompile that GPU function. That means this is now out of date, which means we need to recompile this. But what you might have done in this GPU function is add an additional uniforms. So now the signature to that thing has changed. So we need to recompile uh, the Lisp code that uploads the, the uniforms. But people have already taken a reference to this Lambda and they don't expect references to change underneath them. So we end up wrapping the resulting function in an outer Lambda, which just allows, yeah, just allows us to redefine the internals basically. So there's a couple of things I'm going to need to change in here. Let's start with make pipeline inner. We've got make complete lambda pipeline. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gen complete lambda pipeline. Okay, yes. So nope, that's not what I was thinking of. Um, use program. Come on. Right, here we go. Uh, context, stream, and then uniforms. I think now in def pipeline, we're taking, oh, come on, where is it? Def signature. We take a context, a stream, and a draw array. And we the draw array is ignorable, so we might not use it, but that's, uh, it's important. Oh, I've forgotten all about GPU arrays, uh, GPU pipelines. Um, GPU pipelines? Lambda pipelines, sorry. Uh, so yeah, we need to do that as well. Draw array. Um, surely that matters to draw expander? Nope. We just assume it's called draw array, that's fine. Um, is there anything that had to be done to draw array other than yeah, we just had to declare that it was ignorable. Um, okay, that's good. All right, so that should be enough for um, draw arrays to work with GPU <laughs> Lambda pipelines. Um, let's go back up to partial pipelines. A partial pipeline is when you specify that one of the uniforms is a function. Um, and what it lets you do then is um, later on you can specify which GPU function it is and it will then recompile a new um, pipeline with that function in line. Uh, it's called uniform baking and it's something that Keppel supports. Uh, it isn't a GL thing, it's just a, a Keppel thing because we can. Um, make partial lambda pipeline. Okay, all oh, right, so you can't have Partial 
Pipeline G was cool, but at least one stage taking functions as uniform arguments. If this was def pipeline G, would make a partial pipeline. However, we don't currently support partial lambda pipelines. Good, because that'd be a fucking nightmare. Right, so that's that, hopefully. But we also have wrap allowing recompilation. And this produces a lambda, which is going to call the inner lambda. So where is that? Um, and it does some funky stuff to make this work well. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Right, so let's just look for CTX. Hopefully there's a context thing here. So there's the wrapper. Stream, draw array. Apply, context, stream, draw array. Is that the right way around? I can't actually remember now. Let's look at map. Uh, let's look at multi-draw. Where is it? Multi-map G. Yes, stream draw array command. Wah, draw command array, whatever. I think that's right. Ah, let's just go with it. Recompile, yep. So let's go back to bar. Let's recompile this. Let's open up the REPL and let's see what happens this time. Oh, it did not like that. Oh dear, what's going on? Copy buffer backed GPU array to new Lisp data. That must be pull G. So that suggests we got to down here. Red sub. Yeah, we got there. And it freaked out. Why? I will be. I'm back, I'm back in chat. Don't worry. Um, I can say I'm pretty sure I fell asleep last week. Was hungover watching this. Um, I mean, this will give you a hangover on its own without the drink. Um, Pondabit saying, Darius will wake you up every 10 minutes to see if his chat is still working. <laughs> yeah, see if I'm paying attention. God damn. Okay, so why why didn't that work? At least we can have a look at the error. <sighs> Map buffer was freaking out with a one two eight two. Wait a second. Map buffer within a there's something fiddly about mapping. GPU arrays are pulling from things when you're inside a transform feedback scope. Hold on. So let's just do this instead. That'll do. Well, there's some good news and some weird news. Um, we're missing data at the end here. I think this might be due to us um, not waiting for this to complete. So if we did a with um, there's some GPU fence stuff we've got supported in Keppel. What is it? Um, make GPU fence. And then we, I think we had something wait on GPU fence. There we go. Ah. Didn't help. <laughs> Might be something up with that fence though. I'm not sure. I can't remember if that's it or if it's something else to get there. But anyway, like we're getting 110, 111, 112, and then 202122. So 
That is what I hoped we would get because that means that the index array is taking into account where we are within the buffer. So then the question kind of remains, when do you need base vertex? Because that's really confused me, like now when I want base vertex at all. Oh wait, I know what it is. It's the idea of using the same VAO. Right, so this is something we don't actually support, is we, like, if, if you want to draw from different GPU arrays, um, then we require you to make different buffer streams, like we did here. We made two buffer streams for our different GPU arrays. But binding a VAO is relatively expensive uh, when you're doing a shit ton of other stuff. So then you would want to... Yeah, you would want to use, you wouldn't just want to pack this data in the same um, thing. You would want to use the same buffer stream for the entire set and share the VAO. Now it's kind of, this is one of the places where it's tempting to get, get a bit magic because what we know about, um, is we know the buffer that this is based on, and we know the buffer this is based on, right? So let's say it's just five, right? There's five. And then we know um, what the layout of this data is because we know the types uh, for this stuff. So we know the layout as well. So let's just bring that down here and we'll just call it X. So if both of the buffer numbers and both of the layouts are the same, then they essentially could use the same VAO. So what we could do inside Keppel is magic to let you say, hey, um, I want to share this VAO object, but with, um, you would want to say, I want to be able to make two buffer streams, both of which use the same VAO internally. And the only difference is they would use base vertex to make sure the indexing takes it from the right place. That is actually pretty cool, but we don't want to hide this completely away. So I think what we're going to have to do is allow people to make a buffer stream. And then... Something like this. Yeah, like that. Now let's say, hey, I want to make a buffer stream. Um, and I want to use this index array. And... I want to share the VAO that's inside um, this buffer stream. And then Keppel would check. It would say, okay, make sure that the buffers that are behind both of these two are the same. Make sure that the um, data layout is the same. And maybe, yeah, we'd have to say that the index array is the, we would, ah, that's interesting actually. Could we use the same index array? Not sure about that one. No, we wouldn't want to use the same. Ah. No, because in that case, in the case, oh, oh fuck, right, okay. <laughs> no, you probably want to use a different index array. No, you want, otherwise you're gonna to have to have a different VAO. You can only share the VAO if all of the things are the same, but you're going to use No, that's not correct. All we need to know is that the two index arrays are from the same buffer as well. So you would need both of the GPU arrays, like in this case, to come from the same buffer, and you would want both of the index arrays to come from the same buffer as well. And if it can prove that all that's true and the data layout's the same, which it can just by checking the types of the GPU arrays, then this would be valid. And then we can share the VAO, and then we have a reason to use um, base vertex and we have a place to store it which will be inside these buffer streams that will work that will work okay right now i get that fucking hell it took me an hour and a half but i understand actually where we need to go with this now so what was all this for okay so we were looking into 
how to populate, um, how to make those uh, draw arrays. So we want to have something like um, defund make draw array, passing in a buffer stream and something. And I'm not sure what this is going to be yet, so let's do that. Um, let's go and bring up the REPL again. GP array. Ah, oh, fuck it. Um, so it was something like make... Ah, oh, screw it. Let's just do it over here. Something like make GPU array um, where the initial context was nil and the um, element type was something. What was that element type? Uh, da, 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 um, was it multi draw? Elements indirect command, something like this. One of these, anyway. We can't jump to that, which means we haven't exported that yet, which is something we do need to do before this feature is complete. So let's take these two. Package, pipelines, oops, capital dot pipelines, here we go. Let's just put it down here. Cool. So now when we get back to bar, we should be able to jump to that definition. Good. So that's exported. We want to do this. Um, or this based on whether this has an index array or not. Um, how do we know that? We guess whether it has an index type. Buffer stream index type of this is nil. Yeah. Yes, of course, because we're not going to the end of the season. Dumbass. Right, so if it has this, then we're going to do the top one or the bottom one. This is probably going to evolve into two separate functions, to be honest, but we'll, we'll see how we do. Um, Okay, so let's get rid of that stuff. It's just distracting me. Um, I'm interested in the definitions of these two things because layout is rather important. So what can we take straight away from this? Like a multi-draw call is always working on the same buffer, which means we're always working on the same VAO. Sorry, yeah, we're always working on the same VAO, which means we're working on the same stream pretty much, un unless I go and add support for those shared streams, which might be the right thing to do. Because I think what we're gonna have to do is call make a draw array with a list of, yeah, your list of draw calls, basically. We want this to be quick. So we don't want to have to cons up a whole list of draw calls just to then populate something else. Um, <laughs> Darius is keeping kid awake. Good job. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure how I want that API to look like yet. Um, where are we, 21, 29, cool. Another week where we don't finish the feature. This got bigger. This is what always happens as well. Always gets bigger. Just trying to make something that feels nice. Okay, so count. I mean, by default, we know what these things are. Kind of. Wait, do we?
When is first different? Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of tricksy actually. This is almost like we're going to pass in, like, if I go with that shared buffer stream thing, it's almost like you need to pass in an, um, oh, fucking hell, man. Array of buffer streams, and they would all have to be, um, ugh. They would all have to be of the same index type because you can't mix and match um, these two things in the same multi-draw. Oh, it just doesn't fit very well because then we're having to make loads of buffer streams just to do this and that feels nasty. So what we could say is that you pass in a buffer stream but then this overrides that. And then, then we're pretty much just using this directly. Then we haven't really made anything easier. Um, count is still count. First index. Um, I'm kind of interested in this case. Let's just put a break somewhere around here. Whoops. Break, I. Stream A, stream B. And then we'll call test. Oh, I'm... Yes, there's nothing called sharing yet, I know. It's just an idea. Even B. There we go. Um... Here's our two um, buffer streams. These are the IDs of the VAOs. They've got a length and they're indexed. So start is zero, start byte is zero. Start is zero, start byte zero. Both of you short. So in both of these cases, first would just be zero. Then, uh, have a think. Base vertex we don't support, but well, we don't. We don't expose that nicely through streams yet. We could do that with sharing. But that still won't help in this case unless you just want to pass in an array of buffer streams. So it's still not the nicest thing. Um, this might be something that we just say is an advanced feature and you need to have, know how to use correctly because now we know that the indexing is zero based regardless of uh, where in the GPU buffer the GPU array is. It's actually all right. Index count is self-explanatory. I mean, we could take that as default from whatever the uh, current value of, really? I'm an idiot, oh well, um, let's just abort that. Uh, instancing is set up with, with instances and then anything inside that dynamic scope is, um, will have a thousand instances, any draw call will be instanced. So we could just populate this from that, but again, it seems like it seems like it's not worth it. Base vertex, base instance, both of these are... Base instance might be a little tricksy for people. But again, it's an advanced feature. Maybe this doesn't actually matter. Um, yeah, maybe we just leave it as it is. In which case, we have actually finished the feature. We've just gone a very long way to prove it. So one thing we have come up with is a way to um, a way to support base vertex 
in non indirect rendering. So I can go into here. Um, And add this. Um, wait, what am I going for here? Um, base vertex is useful um, when avoiding the state switch part of rebinding VAOs. Um, this syntax could allow DAO sharing between uh, buffer streams. Kepler would have to check that the uh, buffer for buffer, the um, GPU arrays. The same buffer and the index. The same buffer. And both. Be clear if I said data arrays, it's all GPU arrays. Data arrays have the same format. Okay, so yeah. We come up with a way for doing this. Um, I should probably say, um, see episode 57 of Push, uh, Push and Pixels with Lisp for details. Okay, but I think at the end of it, we just have to accept that this is kind of a, com a complicated feature and there's not many things we can do to, to wrap it up. Kid saying, when you make such a big project like this, do you lose steam after a while? Yeah, and on different features at different times. Um, so I get I get demotivated on one part and I go and work on another thing. So I haven't worked on Vario for a little while um, because it's not the most exciting thing to me right now. Um, it, like, that's how I want to say. To the users of Vario, it's still very much alive and supported. I just, um, yeah, haven't been doing work on it on my weekends for a little while. Uh, that's gone more to Keppel and to some experiments around um, for future projects and stuff like this. Yeah, you kind of just have to kick it around. Don't fight your brain too hard, but do try and discipline your brain. There's some kind of balance between discipline and... Yeah, discipline and being a dick, right? Don't be a dick to yourself, but... Practice does result in some discipline, so I don't know. I look like this, so I'm not disciplined that much. Um, okay, so, oh, fuck me. We've been on quite a journey on this one. Um, we, we really need a test. <laughs> Kids say don't be a dick is hard. <laughs> right, um... Also, we need to export um, multi-map G. Um, also need to look into, while I'm thinking about it, we have that bar file, bar.list, really? Come on. I guess we need to test that things still work. So one way we can do that, we can make sure this still runs, and that tells us that the non-indirect um, pipeline, the pathway, is still good. Uh, so let's just close everything down and bring it back up again. You all play with birds.
It's saying people in this Discord know that I don't know how to not be a dick. Yeah, you've been doing. <laughs> you're ruffling a few feathers over there, boy. I saw that the other day. I'm not entirely surprised that um, they got a little cheesed off. <laughs> but not a political dick. Yes, that's that's true. We don't need any of that. Especially not here. Not when we're trying to have fun. I mean, it's a twisted kind of fun, but it's still fun to me. Mm, cold bilge. Oh, you're not on that Discord anymore. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, dear. Play with birds. Let's just... Uh, play, start. Let's see if it works. You were beamed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I only started one frame. That was silly. There we go. Um, Paul a bit saying what happens on Discord stays on Discord. Kit doesn't. <laughs> he happened on Discord and he was kicked straight out. Um, that's funny, though. Okay, well, at least this is, this is running. So we haven't broken that part of it, which is nice. Oh, did you see that? Oh, that's nasty. Wait for the, wait for the uh, ball to come past here and see it wrapping around. We forgot to disable texture wrapping in our bloom filter. Dumbass. <laughs> right. Um, so what are we doing now? We, we kind of need a test for Multimap G. We need to do something that proves that this fucker works. How is the best way of doing... Like, what is the best way of doing that? We're not using instancing, so we can't use instance GPU arrays. Um, we're not using... We can't change uniforms, because you can't change the state in the middle of a multi-map. Um, what else? We could use... There is a query uh, thing in capital examples. We have an example of uh, is it query. Let's just grab the query. I'm pretty sure it's that here. Primitives written query. Actually, this was in tests. Okay, I, we saw that in tests. Let's go back there. So in here. We let's have a look. We've got a GPU array with three vertices in of type vec four. Um, it's going to make a triangle, so that's going to be one primitive. Then we make a we make some feedback arrays, which we could we could remove these. Um, we make a pipeline, we run the pipeline twice, which means we're going to get two primitives, and then we pull GPU result from the query, and the query was here, was a make a transform feedback primitives written query. Okay, so you do need to do the transform feedback. Does transform feedback work with indirect multi-draw? We could see. Let's try it. Because that will be quite a tidy little test, and the code is mostly recycled, so it's less likely that I'm going to screw it up. Okay, so we will end up doing something like... Oh, it's going to be ugly to, to write this stuff, but it'll work. Let's um, do... Draw array is going to be make GPU array... Um, Why gonna work? What? What? Am I just typing really badly now? No, that is... It's saying there's no definition for make GPU array in tests. Oh yeah, because I'm an idiot and I haven't actually loaded tests. Um, Gavel.tests. Let's uh, comment this out for a second while we... 
Do that. Hopefully that loads correctly. You got banned from the programming Discord as well. <laughs> there seems to be a pattern forming, sir. Well, you're completely chill here, so I'm happy to have you for now. We need no drama. All right, let's just do this. We make a second version of this. We make a draw array, which is make GPU array, and yeah, there we go. That's better. Um, with initial context nil and dimensions two, and the element type is uh, what is it? Um, now draw. What are we doing? Ah, oh, we actually have to pay attention now to whether we're doing draw arrays or draw elements. See, that's one thing. We could get the... We could give the user the correct... Yeah, we could actually just allocate the array for them. <laughs> that would be one thing. Um, so we can make a helper function called... Um, make um, draw array given a stream and given... Um, length and then it would just be this and this would be dependent on type would be if that other thing we had before then it's draw array oh come on what was it Chris I kind of kind of keep forgetting it yes you can I can forget it forever um, Arrays indirect command. There we go. Arrays indirect command or elements indirect command. Oh, fuck. No. The other one. There we go. And it's true if the buffer stream index type. Yeah, basically, if, if the stream has an index type. Let's call it a buffer stream, actually. Then we're going to use elements indirect, otherwise that. So element type. Okay. So maybe that's a function we add in, because that does look slightly useful. Um, the buffer stream is the tri stream, and the length is 2. Kids saying, yeah, I know, I have an 11,000 word uh, project planning essay to do. Being taught about Agile and Waterfall. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. That's like... They might as well just... Yeah, these are... Well. Wow. I didn't know we had viewers in uh, Guantanamo Bay, but welcome, kid. When they've uh, stopped psychologically waterboarding you, then it'll be... Uh... We'll, we'll see how you are. Damn. 11,000 words. Oh. All right. Anyway. Um, set up uh, ARFC uh, draw array. Oh, yeah. Make, uh, yeah, make draw array. Make C draw array? Make draw C array. That would be a bit better. Um, draw array, zero, okay. And we're going to need to do, what's the type? Oh, this is where I'm going to really hate this fucking naming. Elements. Indirect command. Oh, we actually haven't exported those functions. Oh, no. I think, I think it's just going to be too painful to write indirect command everywhere, so I'm going to get rid of the command part. The 
indirect arrays or indirect because indirect is the bit you think about when you're doing this oh it's just sucky uh, well, let's start by exporting this and then we'll hate it and then we can change it so count instance count first base unit base instance sorry elements Okay, so we now will be able to use it from another other thing, but it's gonna suck. So um, transform feedback. So we now have to set up the count um, of this, which is gonna be LM, which is gonna be one. <laughs> I don't like it. Command. Um, are we using instance arrays? No, we're not. And again, like this is a place where this then hides which one we're using. So then we have to remember which one it's using to be able to pick the right accessor. So that sucks as well. Um, I think we're gonna have to make some extra accessors for this that don't hurt. Um, count first is zero. Oh, first Ellen is zero. Um, Oh no, it's going to be three, isn't it? Count is going to be how many vertices, not how many, yeah, not how many primitives. Um, instance count is one, and the last thing was something else. Was base or something like this? Base instance um, is going to be zero. Then we have to do that twice. This is not pretty code. Um, And that's why it gets tempting to take this data and pass it into here, but then you're having to allocate up um, some data structure to store this stuff in. So then maybe we make a generator that you just call multiple times passing in the values and it appends onto that C array. So you get like a, so yeah, maybe that was it, right? Maybe you do a make draw array, you pass in the stream, make draw C array and you pass in the stream and it gives you back an object which contains um, the draw array and a function you can call um, to populate. Um, uh, kid, yeah, um, keep the, uh, yeah, keep that uh, COC political shit out of, out of here. We don't need that on the chat. It's not fun for me. Um, like I say, fine general, but just not mine. Not in mind. Um, so where are we now? We've got five minutes left. So hopefully that'll work. And then what we want to be able to do is go multi-map G. Um, with the draw array command. Draw command array. So yeah, this would then be draw array and then the stream, and then the uniforms. So that is what we hope will work. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Um, and then we just wanna check if the result is two. Oh well, let's see how it's gonna break. Transform 
it's always annoying knowing it's going to break and it's at the end of the stream as well. Oh no, we got to go in package uh, capital.tests. Oh, what? Transform feedback one. It's here. Oh, it's a test called transform feedback one. Okay, so we have to do it at 5 a.m. Uh, run. I thought run let you specify an individual test. Rather than an entire suite. I don't want to run the entire suite, I just want to Oh well. I will not run all tests. Let's just try it. Transform feedback one. Fail! <laughs> yes, invalid operation from multi joyous indirect. Awesome. What was it? Who knows? Now we have to get the fun debugging GL stuff. Um. Yeah, I don't have to read it. <laughs> Here's a pain to read on the background though. Um, why? 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 Invalid operation 1282 from multi draw arrays indirect. Multi draw arrays indirect. 1282. Invalid. Valid what? Valid operation. Generated if a non zero. Buffer name is bound to an enabled array or to the GL draw indirect buffer binding and the buffer's object data store is currently mapped. Okay, so no mapping. Um, it's generated if a geometry shader is active. No. It's generated if GL patches and no tessellation. No. So it's got to be this. Um, fill region. Um, where are we? Oh, we got a couple of minutes left. Come on. If a non-zero buffer object name is bound to an enabled array, or to the draw indirect buffer binding, and the buffer object's data store is currently mapped, then that would make sense if non-zero buffer object name is bound to an enabled array. What, any of them? That's kind of interesting. Is this normal for... Let's have a look what GL draw array freaks out at because... Okay, yeah. If a non-zero buffer object name is bound to an, un to an enabled array and the buffer object's data store is currently... Oh yeah, no, and that's the key point. And. And it's currently mapped. Is there any way that one of these is... Oh, yeah. Absolutely, we're trying to use with transform feedback. For fuck's sake. Okay, so that's not gonna work, which means this test isn't gonna work. Um, that sucks. Let's just see if we can get the call to actually work. We won't be able to see if it worked properly. Well, let's see if we can just get it to not crash. Um, Fuck you! Same again. My stomach's pissed off too. Right, what is this? 1282 invalid operation, multi draw arrays indirect. The only one we know that makes sense is if it's non zero and something's bound. We don't need this query anymore, so we can get rid of that. Um, we don't have anything that's currently mapped. We Pretty careful about unmapping things. All right, so we're hitting the end of the stream now. That's rather annoying. Um,
What to do? There's not really a whole lot we can test here. We'll remove the transform feedback because we don't need that in our example now. Um, don't need that. Don't need uniforms. So we don't need the uniform there. Ah, come on. What is it? What don't you like? Let's go to... Let's just try a couple of things before we, we call it a day. Um, indirect... Let's just make sure. Well, we are getting here because this is the one that's crashing. So if we go prog and high, um, whoops, what am I doing? Prog and print high. And do this again. It says high up here. So we're definitely getting to that point. So we know. Like, it knows it doesn't have an index type. It knows that... Fucking here. What is it? Um, print draw array. Just make sure that that is correct. Yep. Look. C array of arrays indirect command. Two of them. Um, print pull G. Four things in each of them. Bring up multi drawer again just to make sure that that's right. Count instance first and base instance. Count instance first base instance. That looks good. Still freaking out on this. What could be mapped? What's going to be mapped? That's a, uh. If we had things mapped, this would have failed as well. Hmm. Anyone can think of it. And you're doing better than me. Transform feedback. But I'm have to call it a night. So. Non-zero buffer name. So any buffer is bound to an enabled array. Bound to an enabled... Hmm. Yeah, so if any buffer... Down to this and and the buffer objects data store is currently mapped. Yeah, I can't see how that is. So it's got to be one of the other operation errors then, but none of those really made sense uh, in this case. To me, at least. Like, there's no geometry shader involved and there's no patches. So I'm going to need to go and look to see what other kinds of things can draw, can create a invalid exception for uh, multi, multi draw arrays in direct. Um, and we'll start there. So, yeah, that's what we're going to have to call it a night for today. So next week, um, we're going to have a completely different uh, change of pace. We're not going to do Keppel again next week. I'm probably going to get to chew on this um, myself for a while. One thing, let's see if it's if I can remember what it's called. Lib5 scheme. Um, there is a, oh, fuck, what is it called? Is it Lib5? Yes, I think this is it. There is a library, a C library, um, for doing kind of um, constructive solid geometry stuff. And this chaps made this library, so you can, and, and then made he made a scheme editor, a scheme um, way of, of manipulating this. So you can say, define um, a sphere, and then do unions and differences of all these different shapes, and then you get this object. And then you can uh, use the function to export that um, to SVG or as a mesh, which is what we're going to be doing, and things like this. So what I thought we'll do next week is we're going to do a two-part episode. I'm going to start it 
um, with a little bit of Lisp episode where we learn how to use, set up and use CL Auto Wrap, uh, which is a fucking great library for wrapping um, C libs. And then um, we're going to stop the stream and restart, and we're going to carry on by doing a kind of pushing pixels with Lisp episode where we try and use it to get some to get some mesh generated. That would be seriously cool um, if we can do that. Um, and then there was something else as well. Oh yeah, there's another C library which we'll do hopefully another week, uh, which we're gonna wrap, which allows us to get performance information. So you can put little checkpoints throughout your program and uh, it um, just, yeah, it logs at those points in the execution and it produces a heat map graph um, in the browser, which will be totally dope. And if we can get that to work, it'd be amazing. So. That's the plan for the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much for sticking with us through the kind of like diving through the spec and all the dryness of that. Really cool. Lovely to have you here as always. And um, yeah, I think that's it. So I'll catch you next time. Peace.